and welcome to Sea Fishing with CJ from the shed. Right, today I'm going to talk to you about making soft lures. Uh, as you probably realise, I'm, I'm not going out fishing at the moment because I'm kind of locking down until the iron armour comes down a little bit more. Uh, and so I'm looking for things to do. And so I promised last year that I would show you how I make these soft lures. And you may remember that um, last year I did catch some quite nice fish using these lures uh, and there's nothing more satisfying than catching a fish on something that you've made. So the ones that I was using last year were a bit like this, okay? So uh, a nice white lure uh, and I rigged them with a weighted hook on them and, and they fished really well. I had bass on them, I had pollock on them. Uh, I was catching various other species as well, but those were my main prey species. Uh, and so I'm going to make a load more this year and I've bought some moulds to make some different sizes and shapes. So uh, we've got some bigger moulds. Um, I don't know how you'll see this in the shade, in the shadow. We've got some bigger moulds making bigger things and various other shapes as well that we'll be trying out in the duration of this um, video. Now I'm going to start off simply using a pour-in type of lure, which is the easiest and cheapest way of doing this. And we'll have a look at how I did that. Then we will progress on to how I started to do pouring into um, closed lures. Uh, and with some success, uh, obviously that's what I uh, was catching on this year or last year. Uh, and then we're gonna go on further and we're gonna look at using an injector to inject uh, the, the plastic uh, solution into the molds. The, what we're using is Lurasol, um, again, I'm not sure if you're going to see this, and I'll put some shade on it, um, which is a, a plastisol that um, basically you heat it up, you cook it in a jar inside a microwave, and it goes firm, it goes hard. The, the most important piece of equipment I would suggest that you have with you when you're doing anything like this is that you are wearing some sort of respiratory protection. And I'm not talking about a surgical mask now. It needs to be a proper FFP3 mask because you don't want to be inhaling the fumes that comes off this stuff. I dread to think what it does to you. Um, basically, you're lining your lungs with plastic, which probably is not a good idea. So we're going to be wearing a mask while we're doing this. Okay, no more ado, let's look at how we do this. Now to do this, what you need is you need a microwave. You need, you need plenty of um, heat proof receptacles. Uh, and I quite favor these, these beakers actually. Um, I find that they're, they're very easy to use and they come in various sizes. So you can um, make a mix at the, at the exact amount that you need so that you don't end up making too much. Uh, and you need some molds and I've got a number of molds here. So first one that we're gonna look at is one of these very simple pour in the top lure making molds. And we'll make a couple of lures using this first of all. Very simple, not particularly great, but um, definitely would catch fish on the right day. So that's what we're gonna do first of all. So the substance that we use to make these lures is, um, this is Lurasol Ultra, and I get it from a company called Lure Solutions, and it's a soft Lurasol, so it makes a soft lure. Now, you can see I've used a bit of this. Uh, before you use it, you've got to make sure that it's well shaken, so you need to shake it for, a, I don't know, a good minute to make sure that it's fully really mixed in. If you don't do that, then you will end up with a problem. There we go, so that's well mixed up. So we're going to decant some of that into this beaker. Uh, we just want really enough for what we're going to do. Now, when it comes out of the uh, out of the the container, it's white. But that's not how it how it is when you make the lure. It turns transparent once it's cooked. So we're going to need to add a pigment to that to make that colour. So um, we're going to use um, pearlescent white gold, which uh, makes a nice, very shiny white, uh, and we will mix some of that into the substance. So good idea to have some sort of a spatches for doing this. So we'll mix some of that in. Don't need a lot, actually. So we'll put two sort of spatula falls into there and then um, mix it in. And we'll give it a little bit more of a mix once we've warmed it up. Now 
now the people watching this probably have done done this loads of times and they're looking at what I'm doing and going, no, that's not the way I would do it. This is the way I do it. So we're going to put it in the microwave and we put the microwave on um, three quarters power and we'll do it for a minute. Now another thing that you're going to need is a thermometer because you need to make sure this is at the right correct temperature. It's very important that you get the temperature right. If you make it too cold, you haven't cooked it enough, then it won't set. If you make it too hot, it turns into a horrible gloopy there, And it's there's no recovery from that. Once that's happened, it's burnt, it's scorched. So we're just keeping an eye on it in the microwave. We're looking at it to go clear. Um, so it's cooking away in the microwave there. Um, you can see the turntable going round. It's, it's half a minute. You can see it's still quite milky. It's not particularly hot. Let's just have a look and see what temperature that is. That's only 98.6. So we're getting there, but it still needs to be hotter than that. And before we go any further, before we handle that beaker, we want to make sure that we're wearing a heatproof glove because it does get quite hot. Now one of the things I experimented with when I was using these fill top uh, moulds is actually putting a, a weighted hook into the um, into the mould. So these are some lead head jigs that I've, I've made in the past. Um, they're, they're coated with a red um, fiberglass on the head, uh, so that's not going to melt. And what we're going to do is we're going to put that into the into the mould, and I, I hold it in place so that it's so the eye of the of the hook is sticking out from the top of the mould the lure once it's finished is a, is a bit of wire through it like that so we've got the um, the lead head jig sitting so that the hook is sitting going to sit proud of the lure once we pour it make sure we get rid of all this rubbish out of the way it's looking cooked to me looking cooked yeah that's definitely Get in there. What's it reading? 195 is actually overcooked a little bit. So let's pour that into the into our into the mould. Just took the opportunity there whilst we're waiting for this first one to set to go off is to is to pour some I've got some other smaller pour in molds uh, so we'll have a pour of those and see how they go um, I mean it, it takes a while to go fully off but uh, it becomes set enough to actually take it out of the uh, out of the um, the mold after I don't know a minute or so a couple of minutes maybe top wax and there we go there we have our first pour lure okay they, these ones are pretty big paddle tail on them and what I tend to do is I tend to trim them up a little bit and also any overspill we want to trim away just to make it a little bit more of a usable shape. Um, yeah, and they'll catch fish. They're good. They're good enough to catch fish. Um, probably more for wrecking than, than casting. Um, but uh, yeah, no, that works. That works very well. Um, we'll draw our pins because I might need to use those again. So there we have, we have um, three lures, pouring the top lures. Um, the middle one has actually got a hook, uh, which I've put inside it, um, and the other two are just for straight hooking on. Now they all need trimming up a little bit, there's always a, there's a little bit of an overspill there, but um, that's not a problem, we just sit down with a sharp knife, or a pair of scissors and just tidy them up. Um, yeah, so, great. Let's try something a little bit more complicated. We're gonna make some of these, which are, which are an injection mold um, type of lure. Uh, but we'll do it the way I started doing it without using an injector um, initially. S semi successfully, it's the paddle tail because it's quite a fine detail 
sometimes you don't get the lure assault all the way down into that part of the lure. But you still end up with lures that, um, that will work, they just won't have quite an action on the tail. Uh, so let's have a look at that. So the mould that I'm going to use for, for this is this little beauty, and uh, you can have a look at it. It's made out of, a, I don't know, some sort of synthetic stone. Now, if you, if you read online, watch online, most of the people who do this professionally prefer to use uh, metal uh, moulds. Uh, and, and I have got some metal moulds now. We'll see how much better they are in a minute. But we're going to use that one. If you can probably see the, uh, what that's going to make. Um, I'm not sure in the light. Um, but with these, it's a good idea to put just a drop of Lubrosol in them. And it literally just needs to be a drop. And then you need to shake them around to get it into place and get it all the way through the, the mould. But the place that's most important is down in that tail section because that's the set place where you struggle the most to get the, uh, the gel into. So we'll put some in, the, in there. We'll let it run down the, uh, the mould and then we'll shake out any excess. So let's make sure that we've got Lubrosol all the way through that. Just helps the, um, the, the liquid distribute throughout the mould. While we're doing that, we'll reheat this up. There's enough in, in this, this beaker still to do that. It's kind of trial and error with this. It's kind of working out where you want to be on your um, on, 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 on the, the settings on the uh, microwave and how long you want to give it. So that's been half a minute. Let's have a look at that. It's gone up to 99.5. So let's give it another half a minute. Every day is a school day and I'm using my new camera, which you might be able to see if I put this camera on, you can see it to do some of the um, to camera stuff. So there's my new camera. Uh, it is a, a Sony ZV-1 and so far I've been really impressed with it as a vlogging camera. So we use a good old GoPro to do the uh, stock work. But um, whoops, that's been a while. Let's have, let's have a look and see what we're doing. Oh, that's not been steaming quite well. 188, so it's a little bit hot really. Now what we do need is we need a means of clamping this shut. So I've got these these clamps. Clamp that closed. And we're gonna pour in a nice steady stream. get the, uh, the, the, the um, substance right down into the mould, pour a little bit more in there, keeping it filled up so eventually we're sure that we've got all the way down in the mould. And then it's the, the moment of waiting in about a minute when we open this to see if we've been successful. Um, what I have never used before and which I'm going to be using today for the first time is injectors. So we're going to, we're going to experiment, it's going to be a learning process using these and they just sit into the top of that and you inject it into the mold and the molds have little recesses in them where it forces it out so that it squeezes all the way through to the end so we're going to try that in a minute so let's see if this has been in here a little while now we've been successful whoa actually look at that look at that that's not bad at all is it that is not bad at all. That is not bad at all. So let's just peel that out of there. Yeah, look at that. Look at that baby. Now, these are the ones that I was having some quite good success with this year. Um, so I'm going to concentrate on those um, because I, I used all my white ones. And I found that the white ones were the ones that were most affected. I tried different combinations, but it was the white ones that really worked. So well, let's leave that down there to fully set. And we'll think about doing some, other, some more of those. So that worked really well. So I'm feeling quite confident to uh, move on from that. 
So um, let's be a little bit more adventurous. I'm going to mix up all of my um, liquids into one jug and I'm going to use an injector. Now apparently the way to do this is to take the end of the injector. There's two ways you can do it. You can actually use the injector to suck it up or you can fill the injector from the top. So let's try doing that. Let's try filling the injector from the top, see how that works. I've, I've clamped together, a bit more adventurous here, this is a new mould that I've not tried before, this is a double mould, okay, uh, and then the mould that we've just seen. So let's see how that goes. Um, and we've clamped them together, it's on this nice le long leg, so that it will actually stand at a bit of an angle. Um, but we're going to do a little bit of cooking first of all to get this all set up. Um, and then let's take it from there. So that's the jar that we've already been working with. Let's leave that out for a second or so because that's still quite hot. Let's warm this first one up. Get a whole lot of liquid. I've actually got some clear that I worked with before, but we'll leave that because clear um, is quite good for making um, bicolor molds. So you can you can. Um, with these injectors, you can actually inject two colours in. So it's got a lot of go here. As you can probably appreciate, you've got to be very careful with this that you don't overcook it. It'd be very easy to be talking like I have been and overcook this. And you do end up with it starts to go a bit of a strange colour. And once that's happened, it's scorched and it's had it. you'd appreciate um, that I'm not in a in a production mode here I'm not going to be making loads of these lures um, I suppose if you if you got really well set up and and you had a number of multi lure uh, molds you know we can get 10 molds in or whatever uh, at a go you could actually make a lot of these and you could make some money doing it but I'm not doing that I'm not even doing it to save me money this is cost me way more than it would cost to buy those lures um, the one thing is the lures that I'm making, I've not seen in the shops, I suppose they are available, but um, hard to find. And the second thing is that um, there's nothing more satisfying than catching a fish on a lure that you've made yourself. That really, that really is exciting. And I caught a few bass on these lures during the summer. Uh, Pollock um, was getting loads and loads of pouting with, with these. I mean, I know that you don't want to be fishing for pouting, but, you know, it is, it is. It just makes it a little bit more exciting when you catch fish on something that you've made yourself. You used to do a lot of fly tying, and I tell you what, you go and cast a, a fly that you've tied yourself, and you bang into a fish on it. Oh, that is so good, so good. So, you saw how that was... Um, almost solid before it's melting away quite nice it's just bubbling a little bit let's um let's just see what temperature i've got there 100 and so it's about right actually so let's put it to one side let's warm this stuff up as well it needs a bit of a stir it's got a few bubbles in it which is not good Now you can get all sorts of different glitters and sparkles and pigments to put into these lures. Um, black, red, white, all sorts of things, all sorts of things. But as I've said, what I found was that I was getting the best results with the try and get the bubbles out of this you don't want a lure that's full of bubbles because it obviously it's not going to swim properly um, so 
you see that I, I'm not using the glove anymore, to be quite honest with you. It, it's kind of, I wouldn't recommend doing it without a glove, but as long as you keep your hand away from where the liquid is in your melting jars uh, and you're careful, you know, if you do get it on your hand, then yeah, you're going to burn yourself and, and it will be my fault that I did that. Um, so I don't recommend it. I'm a big boy, I want no time to my mum if I burn myself. Right, that says it's hot enough. Looks a bit bloopy to me. Let's give it a stir and reheat again after a stir because it might not be, the, you, know, you know what it's like when you're cooking baked beans is they burn on the outside and they're still cold in the middle. I think that's probably what's going on here. Seven, yeah, so it just needs a few more seconds. Now I am going to wear a glove for this because there is every chance that I'm going to pour this over my hand. So, so we will hold, we will wear a glove for holding the um, injector. So holding the injector and very carefully pour into the injector. So that's going to fall to the top, pushing the top, and then they always recommend that you squirt a little bit out so that you make sure that you fill to the top, and then let's give it a go. That seemed to go all right. Oops. Maybe that's it, maybe I've filled it. Look, it. it's gone off. So put that back in. There's definitely a black art to this. Give this another little nuke. Hmm. Don't know how successful that was, but we'll uh, we'll give it a go. I think also the injector is quite cold, and um, once it warms up a little bit, it will be better. Maybe sucking it into the injector is better because it warms up the, the, the nozzle. So it's not cooling down as it, you know, it's going through a hot nozzle. So let's try doing that. Let's try sucking it in. Hundred and sixty seven. So there we go. So let's try sucking it up. So let's have a look, the proof of the pudding. So let's have a look at the twin one from the double first. See how that's gone. Yeah, the first one, the first one didn't, didn't pour very well. But hey, it's not a problem because we just take that out and we whack it back into the melt pot. But I think that one has actually done okay. That looks pretty okay to me. Peel it out. It's coming out fine. Yeah, look at that bad boy. I mean, it needs a bit of tidying up. Needs, you know, bits of sprue here that have got to be taken off. But, you know, as I said, all we do is we trim them off and we put them back into the milk pot. But that, that is okay. Look at that boy. Ooh, I can see that catching me some bass. Yeah, that's a result, that is. Put that into the cooling pile. Just peel that apart. Yeah, uh, semi, semi, semi. It, it obviously managed to pump some air into it. But the area that's a problem, normally on this lure, is the tail. The tail looks really good. So we'll put that, we'll put him back in the melt pot because he's not quite right. But a good start, a good start. We've got some a metal, we've got some metal on somewhere. Oh yeah. Let's 
you've got these bad boys to try out as well. And they're twin metals, more classic shads. Um, we'll see how they go. Okay, so let's give it a little bit more of a tweak. We've, we've put together three different moulds here now. So uh, I think we'll start with the smaller ones first. How are we doing our temperature? It's looking pretty good. Yeah, 168, so that's, that's definitely the temperature. Let's put these where we can see them on the camera. We've got three good pours there and one not so good. So we'll see how that goes. Learning though, I'm learning each time I do it, it's getting better. Um, it's uh, not as easy as it looks. Certainly not as easy as it looks. Ah, still, we've had a little bit of a glitch around the head for some reason. But the tail has filled up beautifully. But, you know, semi-successful. He can go back in the melting pot. Don't know how many times you can redo this stuff. But uh, this is the middle one. This is the first one that we poured. So it was at the time when it was at its optimum. Oh, and look at those. Look at those bad boys. They have poured really well. Look at those. Oh, I can't wait to give these a go. These, this is another new purchase for me that um, I haven't tried yet. But I reckon those have got Bertie Bass written all over them. So let's put that over there to cool. And this one as well. Bertie Bass. Yeah, baby. Put them right around. Back together again. That's how these big ones are going. I don't think these works, but we'll see. We might be lucky. Oh, no, 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 no. I got one. Got one out of it. That worked all right, then. That worked a treat. Well, I thought I'd have one more go with the metal um, mould. Um, so let's just see the proof of the pudding. What I did with the mould was I actually sat it on top of the heater for a little while. Not, I don't want it hot, just to take the chill off it. Oh, look at that. That made all the difference, didn't it? Just not having an icy cold mould so that the stuff chills as soon as it goes into the, uh, into the mould. And we had a result. I like it knows. I like it knows a lot. Let's get rid of the sprue. Put that into the remelt pot. Big heavy tail on them. I don't know if that's good or bad. So I'm going to give it a nice, slow, leisurely action. And I haven't even started putting any colours to them or uh, sparkles or anything else. That's that's to come. But uh, so far today, I think that was a, a successful little self-taught lesson. Uh, and we got some lures out of it. Uh, we had some failures, but hey, you know, as I said at the start of this, it's about learning, and I'm learning. So let's hopefully we can all learn together. And if you're if you're out there and you're a, you know if you're a, if you're an expert on doing this, and I'm, and you see something that is glaringly wrong that I'm doing, please please leave a comment. But, uh, anyway, happy days. If you're in meet me here tonight Be brave and come along I'll be alright Promise we don't need no brake lights We can travel the world So just say yes Choose to do whatever comes next
right, so um, grab these bass on my homemade lures, which is like this, but as you can see, they have completely ragged this, this lure to pieces now and it's not working. So we're gonna re-rig another one. So we'll take this one off. I'm not, I'm not gonna throw it away because I could probably glue it back together again. And if I can't glue it back together again, the beauty of this material is that you can put it back in the melting pot and just melt it back down again and make another one with it. So recycling. Right now I saw a really nice one in here. Here's one, one of my prototypes. Clear in the tail, white in the head. I reckon that's going to be a killer for bass. So let's see if we can get that rig done. Now the hooks that we're using are these, um, they've got a little lip in them. So that's when, when the thing is rigged up, that needs to be going through the nose of the, of the lure and the hook needs to be sitting in a weedless position just above the lure like that. So we've got to, we've got to thread the thread it through the right way. It'll end up like that. So it's going to go around there, around there. And there. Looks like I go, go, go from this side. You say, for someone who's challenged in the engineering sense, it takes me a bit of working out how to do it. So that's it there. So it's, that's gonna, that's the nose rig properly. So we now need to get the hook so it goes through round about level with there. It's got to go through the centre of the lure. It's got to be bang on the centre, otherwise it won't swim properly. Good thing again is, is it's fairly forgiving. If you get it wrong, you can reset it again. So how's that look? I reckon that ain't too bad. I think that's going to work. We'll give it a go. See how it goes. If it doesn't go, um, we can we can adjust it. Now the only weight on here was a little tungsten ball on there. But that's what makes it swim, it's, it's flexibility in the water, lots of flexibility in the water. Uh, a nice casting weight, and it keeps it upright in the water so it's not spinning around. What we don't want is it spinning. Actually, I'm going to readjust that. Drinking red wine by an open fire, make love of 